you know, everything is great. Great to see MagSafe back. Design is great, I guess. Now we got to talk about internals. Everything is great on the outside. And now let's get into the inside. So despite the very persistent rumors about M1X, Apple, yeah. well, we heard this at the like, last minute with these leaks, uh, did not decide to go that route. Instead, they gave us two new chips. There's M1 Pro and then M1 Max. So we're naming this game, which we'll get to in a minute. But um, consensus here is like kind of basically they're very, obviously very powerful chips. They're both 10 core CPUs with eight high performance cores, then two efficiency cores. And then kind of some differences here in terms of GPU processing power and then memory um, limitations based off the one you go with. So M1 Pro can go up to 32 gigs of unified memory. M1 Max can go up to 64 gigs of unified memory. And then you can sort of configure the different GPU options and core options. Actually, Apple kind of kept it very basic in the video, but if you go on the Apple website and start configuring, there's actually a lot of different options that you have for the CPUs. Um, obviously, they look very impressive. They look like they're going to uh, absolutely just destroy the higher end Intel chips. I mean, the M1 was already super yeah. impressive and the M1 Pro was already set to be 70% faster than the M1. And then yeah, we the got CPU the M1 side. Max. So yep, things exactly. are just sort of crazy there. Um, I, what are your thoughts on these chips and also the names? Well, I don't know how I feel about this. I understand the idea of two um different processors but m1 pro and m1 max i guess that makes the most sense but I yeah, what do you think I, I didn't think about these names even being a possibility until we saw those rumors last minute and then it actually became official but the more i think about it, it actually makes perfect sense you have the m1 you have the m1 pro the m1 max I don't see why, like, I think that's actually better than doing M1X and then, like, what, M1Z? Like, I think that the Pro and the the Max names make the most sense. I, I, I like the names. The only issue is, like, if you're one of those people who wants to brag about what specs you got in your laptop, then you're going to be like, well, I got the 14-inch MacBook Pro with M1 Pro Max. And it's like, it's a really long name, but... No one really says, no one really talks like that. They say I have a MacBook Pro, and then if they, for whatever reason, someone asks, Oh, what processor did you go with? And you say, Oh, I got the M1 Max. You know, it's not that big of a deal. I think it makes sense. Yeah. Talking about names, though, real quick, I, this is kind of going away from the uh, MacBook Pro a little bit, but so this is the M1 Pro, M1 Max, but we still have a very, very pro computer that needs a chip inside. So what are they going to call that? What do you mean? The MacBook, the Mac Pro. Oh, you lost it. That's assuming, yeah, Mac Pro. No, the Mac Pro, yeah. So we have a Mac Pro that is going to get an upgraded chip. So what is that going to be called? Oh, Shouldn't that be the okay. Max? <sighs> that went over my head. Okay, now I understand. <laughs> um, I'm Yeah, is it going to be the M1 Pro Max? Or I could see some totally pro new Max. name. <laughs> because, again, what we said last week, and I think still uh, is true, is that M1, M2, M3, the numbers are more made for the consumer level products. And then the Pro and Max monikers really sort of show you what the higher end chips uh, are and kind of they're more focused on the Pro and machines. That's a great question. I don't know what the Mac Pro is going to have. Maybe it's the, I mean, mega. I, it would make sense. It would make sense. Yeah, the M1 Mega or the M1 Pro Max, sort of the best of both worlds, or they do something <laughs> totally new like M1. I don't even know what they could do. I mean, we know. The I, Mac, I mean, the I could Mac also Pro's see it be being a. Com yeah, it could also just be a different name altogether. Like, uh, I don't know. Yeah, I don't know. I, don't, I have no ideas. <laughs> the or only thing I think just, is like mega. Or it's just some kind of special variation. Like it's a high end M1 Max that maybe is has a higher CPU count, uh, <sighs> higher GPU. Option. I don't or think it's like so, a, though. A, it's dual. They like the base configuration is dual M1 Maxes. I'm, I'm not sure. This is, again, this will probably launch at the end of 2022. So by then, we could see for sure some new Apple Silicon chip because then we're kind of going to be even more in the transition. Yeah, we could even see an M2 by then. I, I wouldn't be surprised by that at all, especially oh, yeah. with this new rumored MacBook Air, which is supposed to have an M2 chip. Um, I mean, yeah, we could easily, they could totally ditch these names to begin with. Like once they get to the M2, maybe they come up with a new naming scheme, which is then unified across the line. Like who knows? They could do that. Um but yeah, like just as the actual chips that we have now, the Pro and the Max, I mean the Pro, so if you've ever used an M1 Mac, you already know these are 
excellent chips. They're really fast. But there's always a few questions that we had, especially as people who make videos for a living, was the graphics. What are they going to do about that? And um, just having a little bit more speed for those intensive tasks that we do. But the M1 already performed extremely well. It has extremely good battery management. All that stuff is excellent. And like you said, the M1 Pro is supposed to be 70% faster for CPU performance than the M1, which is kind of crazy to think about because it's already lightning fast on the M1. But even more than that, the graphics is 100% faster, two mm -hmm. times as fast on the M1 Pro. That's not even talking about the Max. Uh, and then the Max has two times the bandwidth of the Pro when it comes to like processing ability. So, I mean, that sounds insane to me. I mean, like it, it's it, the, add that with the optimization of Mac OS and all the vertical integration. I mean, this should be the best computer ever, right? This is the first time that I can think of in modern Apple history, I guess in really modern CPU history, that I really need to sit down and like take a little class on who each processor is for because all the little differences are kind of over my head. And I'm really curious to see once these reviews come out and once Geek bed, uh, Geekbench tests and more kind of uh, benchmarks come out is what the real differences are because M1 Pro sounds amazing. And then M1 Max takes it up a notch. It's like, how do you know if you should go Pro or Max? That's a really good question that we really kind of don't know right now because exactly. we don't know performance. So I think it's really going to depend on your workflow. But I am so curious to see how these both perform. They're both going to be amazing. And I really want to know for myself, what's the real difference between the M1 Pro and M1 Max? And do you really notice that difference sort of day to day? Hey, you, thank you very much for watching this clip from the Apple Circle podcast. If you want to check out the full episode, hit one of those videos right here and also hit the other surprise video to see a surprise clip from the Apple Circle podcast. Also subscribe to the channel if you haven't already and subscribe to the Apple Circle audio feeds and on all your favorite podcast platforms linked down below. And of course, if you haven't already, subscribe to the main Apple Circle YouTube channel linked right down below.